Hey guys, Luke here, Tranquility Based Detailing. Uh, welcome to a bit of a how-to, some reviews all wrapped into one 15-minute bundle, the gist of which is an interior detail on my daily driver. Um, it was in a foul state. I mean, look at these befores. It was uh, long past due. Uh, one of the downsides of doing this channel, I found, and you know, I don't mean it in a negative way, it's uh, you roll with the punches. Um, obviously, I get sent products to try and review. So I try and prioritize those and it's meant that the interior took a bit of a back seat um, and really it kind of got a little bit uh, out of control and then we went on holidays of family, uh, you know, a lot of driving and it, it just was in a filthy old mess. So my approach, I'm not saying my approach is the right one, but if you watch this, you may pick up some tricks and tips and a little bit of help here and there. You may like some of the products that you see, in which case the links are in the description below. Um, if you do have any questions, if there's anything that you see that you want to know about, ask ask away and I'll, I'll answer as many comments as I possibly can. I do try and get to as many as I can uh, where possible. So here we go. Uh, number one, take everything out of the car that doesn't need to be in there. So for me, that's the kids' car seats, the floor mats. Um, yes, you could go, if you're doing sort of crazy detail, I could kind of essentially unbolt these seats and remove them, but I'm not going to that level. This is just, you know, get everything relatively clean uh, relatively speaking um so for me i always start with seats always have and like i say my way i'm not saying is the right way you may start with a dash you may start with the carpet so whatever floats your boat great so for me i start with the seats um, and it's a loose vacuum very gently just to get all the dust and the loose guff off of my seats with them being leather what i want to do always is just get the loose dust off because i'm going to come in with a leather cleaner after um, so it's not like a fabric one where I'm kind of getting the nozzle on every single square inch of the leather because it's just not really necessary for, for me, for, for my particular need. However, if you do have fabric seats, then obviously spend more time, more care than you've just seen me do. Equally speaking, uh, some of you will say, obviously, the nozzle on the leather, it has a potential to cause damage. And I agree with you. Um, I've never had an issue with it because I've never been an idiot with it. And I think if you're going to be an idiot, you are going to scratch your seats. And if that's you, then just tone it down a little bit. You know, a bit of common sense will be absolutely fine with these. Um, I always work very gently just around the uh, the nooks and the crannies. And then if necessary, if there's anything in there that's sticking particularly, uh, a nice clean detailing brush, just bring that in and just agitate those little nooks, those little crannies, and you'll get all the little uh, crumbs. And in my case, it was sort of mcdonald's salt and all sorts of stuff in there um but it's not a difficult thing just to get this loose surface dust and your first pass really should be that if you compare it to clean the outside of the car you know you pre-wash then you wash then you do your finishing details and it's no different on the interior your first thing really is going through and getting the big chunks of everything out of the way and then you can double back and you can really work into the smaller nooks and you know get all the little bits of dust and, and whatnot uh, but first be thorough work through get your detailing brush into the little bits that you do need to the next step for me then is I always vacuum a second time um, now a lot of you may not do this um, but I swear by it and I'll, I'll sort of explain for why um, your nozzle will only get to so much um, and you know I've seen guys that will get a hose and attach that to some point for me, I actually went looking for this and I found it on eBay. It's a miniature vacuum accessory kit. It cost less than a tenner, I think, when I bought it. Uh, worth it. It's something that I've you know, been using for a, a good long while now. And it really does earn its money. And it is very, very small amount of money at that. Um, so it comes with that length of hose that a lot of guys tend to, to do a DIY themselves. They'll already sort of have that fitted. But along with this length of hose comes a selection of nozzles and brushes. And they're brilliant. They're absolutely fantastic. If you check them comparative to scale, and I'll show you in a second compared to the, the standard nozzle, um, these things are tiny. Um, obviously, you can't vacuum the whole car with them, but they're not designed for that. This is why I bring them in for the second step. I really, you know, rate them to get into the little nooks, the crannies, the vents. How many times have I said nooks and crannies now? That should be a drinking game. I think it's like seven or eight. Um, use it to get into all the tiny little areas. So, for example, I couldn't film this. It was too awkward to try and get uh, footage of. But when I lift up those handles on my seats, 
the dust settles inside there and you can't actually get into that part of the chair from underneath. So using these, get right down, lift the handles up. Um, I just feel better knowing that I've taken all the dust out of there. And a lot of you guys, I know you'll have a similar mindset to me in that way. Um, and then you've got all the li little detail work. So, you know, I can use these to get behind the vents, you know, where that's possible and under the ashtray. Granted, I don't smoke, but, you know, it's dust still gets under there. So I need to kind of pull that uh, that area clean as well. Um, couldn't recommend these things enough. And like I said, there's, there's no detailing shop I know that stocks them. They're just a, a bit of an eBay special. Um, you know, it's almost a, a forensic detailing-esque. I found these on eBay in the cheap type of thing. Um, and I know John loves to do that. And he's spot on with some of the things he finds. So I'm having a go. I'm trying to emulate him and what he does. The next step after that for me, once I've done the second pass with the vacuum cleaner, I always then go on to cleaning the leather. Now, to that end, I've got a bit of an approach which um, I've not seen anyone else use, but I'm, I'm sure it's pretty common. Um, I believe, and the people that are in the leather industry that tend to sort of swear by this is use uh, foaming leather cleaners or wipes. And the reason for that is over drenching the leather, you know, oversaturate it and leather is you know it can be porous to an extent and, and maybe absorb some of that so a foam tends to be a little bit drier what i use is a glip tone leather soap and i'll put it into one of those pump action foaming bottles which i bought from some leather wholesalers ages ago um it gets me that rich foam and then i use uh, the brush that's there it was like a pound 50 from asda so it's a it's actually from the shoe care aisle of all things um, and then this cloth here, this was a bit of a revelation for me. This was one of the things that was sent to me to uh, review. What I used to use was just a microfiber towel, come in, uh, clean bucket of water, but just use that to wipe what had been agitated with the brush and the leather cleaner. Um, this was sent to me, it's a clean bubble towel. So it's sent to me from uh, XL Detailing Supplies, which is Nick. Um, and Nick says, have a go, uh, you know, try it on your leather. It won't grab, it won't cause any damage. You know, my leather's 16 years old. It does have, you know, the odd scuff not, uh, not on there. Um, but he said, have a go. It will hold loads of grime, loads of dirt. Um, so I said, yeah, try it. I'll try it out. I'll give it a go. And it was one of those where I was so pleased with it, it went into my kit bag. Um, and this is not to knock products that don't go into my kit bag, but you guys know because I try so many things and I'm sent so many things for something to, to earn its place, particularly after a first use, um, should speak volumes about it. I think they're a fantastic towel and I can see them becoming quite commonplace uh, for this job and, and probably others. You know, I still need to try it for some other other purposes as well. But you can see the difference there before, well, the left and right of the chair. So the left of the chair being the clean part. Um, is all matte so clean leather typically um, is going to be a matte finish unless the leather's been created to be shiny which is rare in automotive sort of leather it's more common in furniture and things like that um, but yeah a great combo it was you, you know the glip tone I've, I've sworn by for a long time uh, the shoe brush cheap as chips and does a, a fantastic job at sort of really cleaning into the leather grain and uh yeah, if you want to scoop up one of those bubble towels, I can recommend it. And like I always say to you guys, blame it on me, um, but they're really not that expensive. So, you know, scoop a few up and you will, I'm certain you'll find a use for it. And certainly in the leather cleaning part, you will find a, a good use for it as well. So once I'd kind of done the seat, again, this is me just working round. So be methodical, be thorough. Um, you know, I've done the vacuuming, done the second vacuum. With the leather, you can, if you kind of, in a rush and you know for me being a hobbyist this is spend as much time as you want to get it right if you're in a rush you'll just look at the areas that are normally used so it's just like the seat the seat back but you know you get around the back of the headrest the top of the seat between the headrest and uh, the actual seat back um, you know be thorough and work all your way around with all of those things and make sure you get to everything this part here was another thing that was sort of curious to try which was what if I skip the middleman and just use the uh, the clean towel to clean the leather neat um, so I gave it a go and again pleasantly surprised it, it did clean it's not going to tempt me to get rid of the brush stage because I still think the brush is a little bit more thorough in getting into the grain of the leather and really sort of picking out you know the last little bits of dirt but if you were um, you know I build a, a glove box kit I always have sort of a, a bit of a cleaning kit in the car anyway but if you were looking at minimizing the pieces that you needed to carry for that, I would say that the towel uh, paired with the the, uh, the cleaner will work an absolute treat just the same. 
like I said to you all earlier, good clean leather should have a, a real nice matte finish. So just time lapse this part. You can just see it dry out and dry to a nice finished uh, end product. For me, and this advice comes up uh, quite often, people say about conditioning them, tend to ignore that. You know, leathers don't really need that to any great deal. Protection, on the other hand, yeah, protect them, particularly lighter colours, but conditioning less so. Um, so leather's all done, seats, door cards, the works. We're on to then the plastic work, which gave me the opportunity to try out this from Brightmax. Um, I tried spraying it um, and it kind of went everywhere, as you guys can see. So I ended up sort of doing the direct to cloth application after this. Um, but yeah, as a, a little mini review for this, um, I absolutely loved this product. It was a bit of a standout revela revelation for me on the day. Because typically what I've always used to use on the plastics is just an all-purpose cleaner diluted down. Um, and as good a job as that does, um, and you know, that's for the majority of cases, you can kind of get away with it and it's fine. Um, this, it didn't leave any residue. It wasn't sticky. It kind of left nothing behind. Had a nice fragrance to it. And it did a really, really good job of cleaning all of the, the plastic thoroughly. Um, so you can see this sort of film that's coming off it which I can only assume is sort of a build-up for me of uh, dressing that uh, I've got on there, plus grime and other bits and bobs over, you know, the last X number of applications of dressing it. So it was really, really good at what it did, and it was very, very economical. It's one of the products that, for me, if you take nothing else from this, uh, I would say go to Bright Max, scoop a bottle of their interior cleaner up, um, again, like the clean the bubble cloth, it's in my kit bag. It's taken the place of that uh, all-purpose cleaner for the interior. So scoop some up. Uh, again, blame it on me. It's absolutely fine. This is two things you now need to buy because of this video. Um, but I basically liberally worked through the whole interior with this. So, you know, dampened the cloth with it, went round, picked up all the uh, dust from things like this, the rail under the seat and, and whatnot. But it did a really, really fantastic job. So, yeah, a big thumbs up from me. Highly, highly recommended. After that, uh, the mats, um, the carpets were due a wet uh, clean anyway. So they needed sort of uh, the wet vac treatment. Uh, so I seized the opportunity with the day being, it was actually really very hot. So I thought, you know, I can get everything done and dried relatively quickly. Uh, my approach for wet vacuuming them is this. Spray an all-purpose cleaner. In this case, it's Auto Glanz's Infinite. Uh, diluted appropriately onto the carpet of choice, uh, scrub it in with an upholstery brush and then scrub uh, or rather extract it out with your wet extraction machine. What most machines will let you do is actually spray product directly and I've never really liked doing that because essentially what you really want to do is to flush the carpet out with uh, just a neat water whereas if you keep putting the chemical through the cleaner you put it in removing it and not really flushing it through. Add into that a, uh, a lot of these cleaners that tend to over the years clog the pump that's going to push that cleaner out. So do it the way I do it. It's going to be you know easier, less product's going to be used, uh, it's going to dry quicker and it's going to dry potentially without any particular smell of any chemical in it. So the approach that I swear by, I think a lot of pros tend to. Um, so that's again another small little tip from me is don't put the cleaner in the machine spray it separately uh, and basically just use it from there you can see all the brown or the uh, the crap that's coming out of this mat these are done typically when i do my interior uh once per year i'll wet vac them out so it's about a, a once a year build up uh, that i pull out of them but you can see it's well worth doing the same goes for the interiors the same approach so you know sort of spray brush extract it out the reason I'll always do the mats first is I can leave the mats outside um, and then what they can do is dry before I put those back in. Um, so it's just, again, not saying that's the right way to do it, but for me, it's the way that works. This was, it was specifically this bit of carpet. It was really frustrating me because you see all the uh, the foam that was coming out of it. Um, I was cleaning it, cleaning it, and it just kept pulling that. And then it occurred to me, when I spritz uh, interior air fresheners, I tend to spritz them on that bit of carpet. So maybe as a lesson for me, something I needed to pick up from this is, you know, be a little bit less selective of where I spray my air fresheners because that bit of carpet really clearly had built up a good old film of it. Final thing after that, before I show you all the afters, was the glass. And uh, just to finish the mats, I'll show you in a second what I mean by that. Uh, 
There was a tip I saw, it was on Detailing Central the other day, which was cleaning the glass with a blue paper towel or blue paper roll. Um, I have to say the tip was warranted. It's a fantastic tool to use, albeit a disposable one. So for me, it won't replace glass cloths, but uh, if you do have some around and you're struggling, use it. It'll leave a fantastic finish. Um, everything after this, or as far as the plastics at least, wiped down and dressed with Bright Max's interior dressing. For me, it left uh, a nice, subtle sheen to the uh, the plastics. Uh, not unpleasant at all. And again, it smelt really rather quite nice. Uh, but yeah, these are the finished shots. So clean matte leather, uh, logos in the mats. These were from Chris from DM Signs and Designs. The links are below for them. Uh, they are fantastic quality. They're like a plastic uh, and aluminium laminate. So they are built to last. So if you do want one for your business, your brand, uh, go and talk to Chris and he'll sort you out. Um, and then this is all the finished shots. The woodwork I was wiped down with Auto Glanz's um, Quick Detailer Smooth Velvet. I think it gives a, a nice finish for those. And like I said, the Bright Max stuff used just to dress all the plastics. If you've got any questions or if you've uh, anything you want to ask, ask them in the comments below. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to share it, like, comment and subscribe. Uh, and join me again soon for the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.